Hello and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Uh, this week I have been with four different books, kind of. Uh, we've got uh, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl, uh, Charlie in the Great Glass Elevator by Roald Dahl, The Complete Illustrated Fairy Tales of the Brothers Grimm by Jacob Grimm and Wilhelm Grimm, and the grammar book, uh, an ESL EFL teacher's course, second edition by Marianne Celsi Mercia and Diane Larson Freeman. Okay, so uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Actually, this one I did not read any pages of this week. Uh, I was engaged with it this week because I was writing up my final review for it and I was making a, a video review of it, which I uploaded on this channel earlier this week. Um, but uh, I, I don't have any page numbers here to count towards my total. Charlie and the Glass, uh, Great Glass Elevator, however, I read from beginning to end, uh, 182 pages, although it's large print and lots of illustrations, so take that page count with a grain of salt. Uh, and this one I also don't want to talk too much about, but for separate reasons. Uh, this one, because I've read the whole thing in just one week, um, and because I've read the whole book now, in order to get into my thoughts on this would, would uh, verge on uh, the kind of review I give to a book I've completed. So I'm going to come back hopefully sometime this week uh, and review this book. Uh, I'm a bit busier this week with work and other stuff. Um, we're in as you can maybe tell by the beard and the, the long hair, we're still in quarantine lockdown here in Vietnam. Um, but that uh, that doesn't mean I don't have a lot of work to do from lockdown. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, all of that work is on a computer. So that uh, means when I do have some free time, I'm less inclined to spend it on the computer writing reviews. But uh, enough excuses. Uh, I'm going to try and get uh, something written up this week and then come back with a full video review of this. Okay, uh, the grammar book. It's not been a great week with the grammar book. Um, I, I managed to finish off a chapter. Uh, so I was on page 54. This is the... Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I, I know this uh, camera shows everything in mirror images. Uh, but this is the chapter on modal auxiliaries and related phrasal forms, uh, in which I finished off the end of the chapter. It was the, the section on teaching suggestions. Uh, I hate to say it, but the, the sections on teaching suggestions throughout this book have been rather underwhelming. Um, they're... They're the type of things that... Uh, either rely on very highly motivated students or uh, t tend to be very boring activities, um, controlled practice type things. Um, but uh, I, I want to temper that by saying, on the whole, I've been finding the informational content of this book about grammar very useful. It's just that the teaching suggestions are a bit underwhelming. And then uh, after the teaching suggestions at the end of each chapter are some exercises. I, I didn't actually write anything down for these exercises. They were all exercises that, you know, there were no sentence diagrams in this chapter. So they were all exercises like think about the meaning of this sentence. And I just kind of did that mentally uh, and then flipped to the back to check the answer. Uh, and then the there's a bibliography and notes for further reading at the end of each book sorry each chapter which i do actually try and look over just to not that i'm actually going to track down any of these books all right who knows maybe i might but not anytime soon but just to see what else is out there um in terms of other grammar books uh and then the end notes which uh i've yeah, I've been reading all along as, as I went through the chapter. And then that's it. Uh, chapter 9 here. So I, I hate to make this week all about excuses, but uh, 
yeah, this is another week in which I've not made great progress on this book. And uh, m my professional development reading, uh, I get done normally at work. I've never been great for getting professional development. Yeah, at work, meaning, you know, during my lunch break or something. Uh, I'll go to the coffee shop for an hour, bring my book with me, and then just try and work through 10 or 20 pages at work. Uh, I've, I've never been great for doing professional development reading at home, especially since uh, we, we had the baby, who, who is now a toddler. Um, but, uh, yeah, and uh, with, with all the stuff, being on a computer with uh, the COVID lockdown and stuff, my, my brain has been a bit fried, as I said last week. All that being said, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and be more disciplined this week. Hopefully I don't regret making this commitment. But uh, I, all the books that I'm actively reading, that I actively have out on my reading list for this week, I'm going to try and at least get two pages done. Uh, at least be able to turn the page once every day. Um, I, I know that's a rather low bar, but at, at least if you get the pages turning at least once a day, then it keeps the book active in your mind. Uh, otherwise, I, I would be in danger of just drifting away from the book, which I have a bad habit of doing in my reading. So, uh, yeah, just... Uh, just six pages in this book and, and a couple of those pages being bibliography and in notes, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count it. And then the Brothers Grimm, um, which was 70 pages uh, this week. Um, so um, I, I, I would say it's the bulk of my reading, except that the bulk of my reading was 180 pages from this book. Um, but uh, 70 pages would be the second most. And uh, since I have some time left on this video, I think I might just talk about some of the stories I read this week. Now, fair warning, I'm not sure this is going to be intelligent commentary, especially because these stories have a way of all running together. Um, because they're all, as I've been saying every week, uh, the stories are all the same themes pop up in each story. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to talk. We'll see if it's of any value. So I did page, uh, sorry, story, uh, 121, the King's son who feared nothing. Um, so this reminded me a little bit, all, all of the stories remind you of other stories. Uh, but this reminded me a little bit of, uh, one of the earlier stories, uh, story number four. Four, I believe it is the story of the youth who went forth to learn about fear and this is another young man who fears nothing although although with this story not quite as big of a deal is made of the fact that he's not afraid of anything it's just part of his character so he goes out and this giant gives him an impossible task and he's not even afraid of the giant doesn't even notice it he picks up a lion along the way and the, the lion helps him uh, fight the giant uh, and then uh, he ends up with the princess at the end. Yeah, it's, it's a fairly average story. Um, the next one, story 122, Donkey Cabbages, I thought was a little bit interesting. It starts out, starts out fairly standard enough. Um, there's a huntsman. He stops, an old woman stops him and asks him for compassion on the poor. He doesn't have much, but he gives her what he can afford. Uh, and then she rewards him by giving him magical gifts. This is a very common beginning with these Brothers Grimm stories. I don't, I've, I've, I've lost count of how many stories begin this way. So he, uh, he has, uh, swallows the heart of a dead bird. And every morning there's a gold piece that appears on his pillow, which is a, um, a, an ability which has popped up, I think, in one or maybe two stories already so far. So again, I, all these themes just get repeated in here. The, the, the ability to wake up every morning and have a gold piece on your pillow is, uh, is an ability that's popped up a couple times before. 
And he's got a cloak that will take him wherever he wishes. And again, this is something that's popped up uh, again before this was in the King of the Golden Mountain and I think a couple other stories. And then he goes to a castle where there's an old witch and a beautiful young woman. And there's also a maidservant in there. And they discover that he has these wonderful things and they contrive to steal it from them, from him. Um, and the beautiful young maiden does it as well, although it's, it's, um, it's made clear that she's just doing it because she's afraid of the witch. But there's never any, any indication that she is returning his love. He is in love with her instantly, um, which is quite typical of these Brothers Grimm stories. There's, there's never any reason to fall in love with anybody other than they happen to be a prince or they happen to be beautiful. Which I suppose you could criticize easily. I, I suppose I'm criticizing it now in a way. Um, but at the same time, you've got to keep in mind these are very short stories. So you wouldn't expect any character development. And then as he's coming back, he uh, finds a garden where there's cabbage. And he eats one cabbage and he turns into a donkey. And then he eats another cabbage and he turns back into a human. So he... he he discovers that um, one cabbage will turn you into a donkey and another cabbage will make you back into a human. Uh, the title of the story is Donkey Cabbages. So as he's coming back, sorry, did I forget to explain that? He, he's, he's coming back because uh, the, the, the beautiful maiden tricked him. Uh, they, they went far away with his magical cloak that can tr transport you anywhere you want to go. Then he fell asleep and she took the magical cloak from him and just left him alone in the mountain. So he's coming all the way back and he's taking the cabbage with him. He disguises himself and he gives the cabbage uh, to the beautiful maiden and to the, the girl servant and to the witch. And it turns them in to donkeys, all of them, because it's the donkey cabbage. So then he, uh, he takes them out and he drives them to the mill where he gives them... Uh, and he's still in love with the beautiful young maiden, even though she's a donkey, which is a bit strange. Um, so he has the miller uh, beat one of the donkeys all the time and not give him any food. That, that, that donkey is the witch. Uh, the other one was the maidservant. I think she got some food and a little bit of beatings. Uh, and then was the beautiful maiden he was in love with, and that donkey, the, the miller, was instructed to only give food to and not give any beatings. And then he comes back, and the, the, one of the donkeys is dead, that had been the witch, uh, and the other two are still alive, so he gives them the cabbage to transform them back, uh, and then he marries the beautiful maiden. Uh... The next one, The Old Woman in the Wood. Uh, this story I actually quite enjoyed. I, I, I know I've been complaining about these Brothers Grimm stories as I read them. Um, but th this, this one was quite short. Uh, it was just uh, two pages and a little bit. Uh, and I, I thought this one, this one was uh, very imaginative, or at least it... Um, was able to evoke a certain setting in me. I, I quite like these woodland stories with these magical forests. Uh, and so it starts off, uh, a servant girl is traveling with her family. Then the whole family gets murdered by robbers. Uh, and the servant girl is the only one left alive. Why she's left alive is, uh, I was gonna say it's not explained, but actually, sorry, it is explained. So they all perished together except the girl who had jumped out of the carriage in a fright and hidden herself behind a tree. Um, yeah, the, the, um, the explanations in these stories is, is not great. It, it just says like something happened. So she's, she's left alone in the forest and she doesn't know how she's going to survive. And then this bird comes and gives her keys. And she uses the keys to open up the trees. And one tree will have uh, bread and milk inside uh, on a little dish. So she'll be able to eat. And then another tree at night will open up and it will have a bed. And she'll, so she'll be able to sleep. 
Um, and, you know, of course, the whole thing is ridiculous, but it's a fairy tale. And I, th there are no illustrations in this particular one, although I think this would be a, a very interesting story to illustrate. But I was just imagining all these magical trees that you could open up, and I, I thought that was interesting. Um, sorry, I, I, I should say, I should make it clear, there are no illustrations in this edition. I, w I was looking this story up on Wikipedia, and Wikipedia, uh, in its uh, wiki comments, does have illustrations for this. Uh, the one on Wikipedia was in, in the last scene, when after she's stolen the, the plain ring back from the witch, which is part of the story, uh, the, the tree she's leaning against just kind of envelops her. And then it turns out that the tree was a prince who was changed into a tree by the evil witch, and he also could appear as a bird for two hours. Um, next is uh, story 124, uh, Three Brothers. So this is about... Uh, this, this is another common setup here, where there's a father who's got a certain amount of sons, and he sets them out in the world to make their fortune or to, to master a craft, and then they come back and they show off their craft. Uh, in this case, it's to see who gets to keep the house that he has. Um, so they, they all go out and uh, learn to do something really well and then come back and show it off. Then uh, story 125, The Devil and His Grandmother. Uh, the devil actually shows up uh, as a character in a lot of these stories. Uh, God, God shows up as a character in a few of them, but the devil shows up in more of them. Um, and it starts off, there was a great war, and there were a lot of soldiers, but the king wasn't paying them well. Which is the start, actually, to a lot of these Brothers Grimm stories. Um, a lot of these stories start off with this soldier who served the king faithfully for years, but then gets just discharged without any money. Uh, that That's... Um, a very common start and, and quite often the devil is involved in these stories uh, about soldiers who get discharged. Uh, this one is a little bit different um, because they're still in the army. They, ha they, they haven't been discharged. They're still in the army but they, they're not being paid enough to live on. So they desert and then they need the devil's help to help them desert. Um, and the devil uh, turns into a dragon, I think, and flies him out of the army. Uh, and then he gives them whips, and every time they crack the whip, gold will, will appear. Uh, and they can do that for seven years and live a life of, of riches and sin. And then he comes back to claim their souls to hell unless they can guess the riddle. And the devil's grandmother helps him with the riddle. So, yeah, that one was okay. Um, Ferdinand the Faithful. So this is about uh, a guy who's called Ferdinand the Faithful, and he goes on a journey, and there are many different animals that he helps along the way. There's a, a fish who's uh, out of the water and gasping for breath, and he puts her fish back in. Um, and then uh, what other animals does he help? Um Yeah, he helps the fish. Sorry, these stories all run together in my mind. Um, helps the fish. Uh, and then later on, the king gives him a number of tasks to do or he's going to be killed. And he's able to rely on the help of the, uh, the fish um, that he had helped before, which is, a, uh, which is also very common in these stories. Uh, the idea of uh, people going forth and randomly helping a bunch of animals and then those animals helping them later when the king makes them do tasks has come up in a number of these before. Then there's the iron stove. Now, how does this one begin again? There's a stove in the forest uh, that they find and there's a prince trapped inside the stove and he, he's got to be uh, freed by a princess the, the idea is the princess is going to free him, and then he marries a princess. The king doesn't want to lose his only daughter, so the king tries various ways to get other 
beautiful women to to scrape what well, well, you have to scrape the iron off of the stove to free the prince who's trapped inside gets various other women beautiful girls to do it um, but then when the princess sees how handsome the prince is she falls in love with him but then he gets um somehow how did how did that that happen again uh oh yeah so there were she was allowed to go back home to her father uh, after she freed him, but she couldn't say more than three words to her father. And she says more than three words to her father. So then the iron stove with the prince inside disappears and, and is taken to a faraway land over glass mountains and piercing swords. Um, this is something else that it happens all the time in the, these stories is that magic happens with, with very little explanation of kind of why this happened it's just this this is the magic um i think in subsequent retellings of these stories or like in the disney movies of these stories uh they've tried to make the magic make a little bit more sense you know and, and things like sleeping beauty or snow white where the 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 enchantment and the terms and the conditions of the enchantment are set up ahead of time if she gets kissed by true love, then that will wake her up. Um, but in the, these uh, original Brothers Grimm stories, the magic is just seems to be random. Stuff isn't set up ahead of time. It, the magic just happens. Um, anyways, she, she goes to get the prince then when she finds out where he's gone to because now she's in love with him. Uh, but then he's completely forgotten about her and uh, he's with another girl. And so then she has three nuts, uh, which each have a beautiful dress in them. And she uh, puts on the dress. Uh, and the, the prince's uh, current uh, betrothed sees those beautiful dresses and say, I must have them. And she says, okay, I'll give you this dress if I can have one night in the chamber with the prince. So she gets one night in the chamber of the prince, but the prince is fast asleep. So she's trying to tell the prince, don't you remember me? I'm the one who freed you from the iron stove. We were promised to be married. But the prince is just sleeping and he doesn't hear any of this. And this has popped up in a lot of stories so far. In fact, I think just last week on my weekly reading vlog for last week, I was telling a, a story with the exact same plot and complaining that I had heard that exact same plot a couple of times previous. So this is... I don't know, this is the, the fourth time uh, where the same plot has come in with uh, the dresses being inside nuts and trading the dresses to get one night with the prince or princess. And then while you're, you have that one night, you're trying to make them remember who you are, but they're just completely sleeping the whole time because of a sleeping potion they've been given. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I... Again, I've, I've been saying this all along, but um, I'll say it again. Uh, th these are obviously different versions of the same story, which have been bouncing around the various villages, uh, and the Brothers Grimm have uh, recorded... Uh, the stories have different names, but it's obviously the same story. Um, then uh, story 128, The Lazy Spinner. This is a real short one only uh, a couple pages uh, and this is um, just about a wife who doesn't want to spin and, and tricks her husband it's moderately interesting next is the four skillful skillful brothers but skillful you can see a picture here so there are four brothers they each have their own unique skill and then there's a princess who gets carried away by the dragon you can see in this picture uh, the, the pictures uh, are really what bring life to these stories because the narration doesn't really do it. I mean, the narration is just, not long after this, there is a great uproar in the country for the king's daughter was carried off by a dragon. So that, that's all the description of it you get. And for to fill in your imagination more, um, the, this picture shows a lot of things here about... Uh, the, yeah, the, the, the picture adds a lot more detail, which is not in the narration. Of course, these, these aren't the original 
pictures from the Brothers Grimm. Uh, these were added by the publisher. And then here's another one of the princess and the dragon on, on a small island. Um, so yeah, the, the brothers go and save her with their unique gifts. Uh, and then there's another one called One Eye, Two Eyes, Three Eyes. And this one is, again, in many ways, making use of the same story elements that have popped up in previous stories, like they all do. But it's a bit strange because um, the, 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 the initial premise of the story is different. Uh, there's a, a woman who has three daughters. And one daughter is called One Eye because she just has a single eye in her forehead. Uh, another daughter is called Two Eyes because she has a, two eyes like a normal person. And another daughter is called Three Eyes because she has uh, two eyes and the one in her forehead. Um, if you're familiar with Japanese anime, maybe, um, I, again, I'm, I'm drawing here from my eight years of living in Japan. Uh, you know that the eye in the center of the forehead is, is supposed to be like a, a symbol of enlightenment or something like that in Buddhism, which is often reflected in Japanese manga or anime. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's got any special significance in Western culture, does it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, I, I, I don't think it's supposed to have any significance in the story, except uh, Two Eyes is bullied by her sister, One Eye and Three Eyes, because she just has two eyes like a normal person, and she can't see as well as they can. Now, of course, you're thinking, okay, well, three eyes, it makes sense. Three eyes can see better than her. I mean, probably not really, because how much extra perception does an eye right in your forehead actually add? I mean, probably not much. But, you know, by, by children's logic, uh, three eyes are better than two. But then why, why does one eye see better than two eyes? That's never explained. There's just a whole bunch of things in the, these stories that are just never explained. Uh, so they, it's kind of a Cinderella story where she's bullied, uh, and sh there's a old lady who comes to help her and, and various things that have popped up before in a lot of these other stories. Uh, then story 131, which, uh, is only, uh, two pages long, uh, this, this page and this page, and, uh, appears to be some sort of, of, of rhyme, which I can only assume worked, worked better in the original German. Uh, there are a few stories like this, which uh, appear to be based off of uh, rhythm or rhymes or puns. Um, I don't speak German, so I can only read this in translation, and, you know, it was all right. It was only a page. Fox and the Horse. Uh, this one was actually interesting. Uh, on, only a couple pages long, plus this picture here. I, I thought that was all right. I'm running out of time here. Uh, my, I think my favorite story this week was actually 133, The Shoes That Were Danced to Pieces. Uh, just because of the imagery in it uh, about this uh, underground land where there's this underground forest and an underground lake and an underground castle. Uh, and underground princes. Um, so th this this one I really liked actually. Th th there are there are some gems in here for all the repetition. Uh, and and this story actually, the shoes that were danced to pieces, I think was so far is pretty unique. I've been complaining that all these stories are just just different versions of the, each other. There there are some elements of course that are in the other stories, but the idea of this underground kingdom where the princesses are dancing, I think, was unique. Uh, the next one, The Six Servants. Uh, this, this one is certainly a version of a story that's come on over and over again, where uh, a guy is traveling and he picks up different people with different abilities, and then the, the king gives them all these ridiculous tasks, and he's got to rely on all his various servants with different abilities. Uh, kind, kind of struck me as kind of like the X-Men before the X-Men. You know, there's there's one... In fact, there's actually, there's one guy in here 
who has his eyes bandaged because when he takes off the bandage, his eyes will break whoever he's looking at. So he has to keep his eyes bandaged all the time. Um, 